Well, just as I predicted, Democrats are now eating Joe Biden alive. I said back when Joe Biden announced that he was going to run for president, uh, that the Democrats didn't like that so much. And since then, I think they have planning have been planning to get him out in the nail has just dropped for that entire thing uh, with the release of Robert Hur's report that Joe Biden is too feeble and, well, not all there mentally when it comes to his memory of a man. So therefore, we are not going to, well, go after him regarding this classified document case because we don't believe he can handle the stress, wink and a nod. Uh, now that said, this has set off a firestorm of Democrats to attack him and eat him alive. But um, the report that I have to show you today, even even they're now dropping information about literal fights in the White House. And I don't mean necessarily fist fights. I mean like yelling fights, every, calling cuss words and the whole nine yards. You guys are going to uh, be shocked by this. But before I even get into that, I want to say my two cents on this Robert Herr drop. Uh, yeah, he was appointed, I believe, by Donald J. Trump. But I don't think he's a Republican. I don't think he's on the Republican side. And I say that because I honestly believe that Robert Herr may have gotten his marching orders, say, from Barack Obama and the Clinton team saying, hey, it's time to take him out. It's time to, like, let America know that he's not too feeble of a man and it's time to bring somebody else in. So go ahead and release the report on Joe Biden because our intent was never to have him run for president. And here we are. So I think they're definitely going to bring someone else up, um, be it Whitmer, be it... Um, uh, Newsom, both of which I hate, be it Michelle Obama, if she ever actually wants to take the rein, rein, reins, uh, but I don't think she will. Uh, but that's the thing. I don't think hers on our side. I think he took marching orders from Obama and the Clintons to go ahead and drop the nail and let's get a new candidate in because we all know Joe Biden is not running the presidential office. He's not there. He needs to be in a nursing home and he refuses to take a cognitive test, by the way. Um, yeah, Defiant White House, take a look at this. Just more more evidence. NYPost.com, Defiant White House says Biden won't take a cognitive test despite damning her report and worried voters. Why do I need a cognitive test? <laughs> well, now. I think every president should have to do that. Now, before I dive into the infighting in the White House, and you guys are going to want to hear this, just a quick shout out to my sponsor, Noble Gold Investments. Look, if you guys have not invested, you're really running on time, especially with a bumbling person like him in charge of the White House. And it's scary to think another Democrat could be in charge. Uh, but right now, if you want to really save your family, save your investments, or start investing, then you're going to want to go to lisahavengold.com, fill out this information, click get it now. And they're going to send you this free gold and silver investment guide to your home. In fact, give them a call at the number on the screen. Let them know I sent you and talk to one of their no-hassle people about getting a 401k, a Roth IRA, or something backed by gold, silver, and precious metals. Believe me, I sponsor with them on purpose because I wholeheartedly believe in what they are offering and I do not want you to be left in the dark. And by the way, make sure you mention my name because they are giving away this one-fourth ounce uh, gold coin here with every approved plan. So check it out. Go to lisahavengold.com. You want more information? Click that more button or click in the description box below. All right, so let's dive in first to this Axios, far left as you can get, mainstream news sources in which they're literally now bashing Biden, which I predicted that they would do, and now they are. Take a look here. And uh, they headline this, and this is the one that has all the infighting, by the way, uh, exclusive, how Biden botched the border. Well, you think everybody knows he botched the border and literally has looked the other way on purpose. But in this report, it talks about infighting between him and his administration regarding border policies. And he starts off with this. He says, look, the White House generally doesn't want to talk publicly about immigration or the border for much of Biden's first three years feeling it's going to draw attention to a politically vulnerability. So ba basically, Joe Biden, this report starts off saying, well, we don't normally or, or the Axios report is claiming that the White House doesn't generally like to talk about it, you know, because it's a hot subject. Well, it wasn't only a hot subject, say, for the American people and the Democrats and the Republicans, but it's a hot subject for the Biden administration specifically. Take a look at this. It goes on. The president lit 
lit, as in, into his team, which included then-Deputy Chief of Staff Jen O'Malley Dillon, Homeland Security Advisor Liz Sherwood Randall, and other immigration officials. He demanded obscure immigration data points and vented at his staff when he didn't have them handy. Then it talks about also some of the chaos that ensued. There was infighting, blame shifting, and indecision. It goes on to state that Biden's fury subsided and aides would scramble for the information he wanted. People in the meeting later told others in frustration that his winding process and irritability were making it more difficult to reach decisions about the border. And by the way, with all this infighting, in the White House that they're just now telling us about, right? Um, one of the signs of dementia are outbreaks in rage and wrath. Just saying, just saying. I'm not a doctor, who knows? But it goes on to talk about specifically some of the chaos, and it says the rolling chaos along the border has grown to a point that Biden now is embracing immigration policies that he ran against in 2020, such as restricting asylum laws and suggesting he'll shut down the border as the crisis threatens his re-election. So obviously, we have heard that from him lately uh, regarding his new policies. In fact, the article goes on to talk about the lack of Kamala Harris doing anything regarding the border. Well, I'm, I'm just going to show you because I, I think this is important, but take a look here. Vice President Kamala Harris and her office made clear to others in the administration that her responsibilities began and ended with the factors driving people to leave Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, the issue Biden had assigned her to examine. Well, a former Biden administration senior official told Axios, well, Kamala Kamala Harris has been at best ineffective and at worst sporadically engaged and not seeing it was her responsibility. It's an opportunity for her and she did not feel the breach. In other words, Kamala Harris sucks at anything regarding the border. In fact, uh, they even called the strategy, the entire strategy of their border issues well, incoherent at best. Take a look here. The White House immigration team also saw constant turnover. As a result, the strategy was incoherent from the very beginning, said one former Biden official involved in immigration policy. Now, that's not all. There was also a lot of turmoil and infighting within his own department. Infighting broke out among those on Biden's team. Domestic policy advisor Susan Rice emerged as a central and controversial coordinator of the administration's approach to the border. It goes on, there was and still is deep animosity towards Health and Human Service Secretary Xavier Bursa for what was seen as his reluctancy to find more space in child migrant shelters, which are overseen by HHS, according to several sources familiar with the dynamics. Rice referred to Burka as a bitch ass and privately called him an idiot, according to multiple sources. During one meeting when Biden was tearing into Bursa, Rice passed Mayorkas a note that read, do not save him, according to two people familiar with the matter and the meeting. Excuse me. <laughs> that gets a little interesting. But Rice also had some cl other clashes here. Rice also clashed repeatedly with Shearwood Randall and his tension with VP Harris, according to people familiar with the dynamics. The tension between Rice and and Harris had origins in the summer of 2020 when both were being vetted for vice president. Rice later told People she thought Harris and her team were partly responsible for opposition research that resulted in negative coverage of Rice. Rice appeared to others to take pride in being more informed on the Border than Harris. Some of Harris's aides found Rice to be disrespectful toward the VP and dismissively referred to the former UN ambassador as just a staffer. <laughs> Of course, Rice declines it and all of that. But here we have infighting between Rice and Harris because Rice is upset that Harris won the VP bid. And just, you know, a future thought. I'm sure they now regret picking Harris over Rice. But I digress. <laughs> we've got jealousy. We've got clashing. Uh, we even have more cussing. You you heard that. Here's another uh, cuss thing that happened. Jason Hauser, the then deputy chief of staff at ICE, made several profanity-laced calls to the White House and DHS officials, angry about ramping up expulsions of Haitians using Title 42, according to sources with knowledge of the call. <laughs> there is a lot going on there. All kinds, Rice and Kamala, 
we have all his different uh, administration fighting, claiming people are going to get hurt. And the things that I didn't share with you in that are, are, are they talk about, on top of it all, all the different various views that they would have on the border. Biden held one, Rice held another, uh, and of course, Kamala and all these. And they all clashed with each other. So it's just been a bloody nightmare, yelling, fighting, infighting, all of that there at the White House. It's interesting that they haven't released this until just right now after Robert Herr's report that he's a too feeble of a man to indict because they're not going to indict a sitting president and they sure the hell aren't going to indict a Democrat. But either way, I think the Obama and Clinton team wanted it out and gave the marching orders to Robert Herr to do. He's not on our side, folks. I really don't. I don't care who appointed him. I really don't believe that. You can disagree. I totally get that. But all the marching orders have been sent. And look, even Politico is now got their points here. We have Democrats might need a plan B. Here's what it looks like. And in this article, by, by the way, they give uh, three scenarios of, you know, um, what could potentially happen and, and, and how to get him out uh, and all of that in this entire article. I'm going to spare you the details because the truth of the matter is. Whatever way they get to it, I believe they're going to get to it. They do not want this guy in. And then we also have the New York Times. The question is not if Biden should step aside, it's how he should step aside. This is coming from his own news sources, Wall Street Journal. My memory is fine. I think those were the worst words Biden could have said. <laughs> Another unforgettable denial of reality. My memory's fine. And then they get in that article in Wall Street Journal to talk about how other presidents have said things. I did not cheat with that woman. Um, I think it was Bill Clinton that said something similar. And he did, and he got busted for it later. Same thing. They never admit to their wrong, as it says, an unforgettable denial of reality. Now, are they suddenly our friends at the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and Politico? No, absolutely not. It is the Democrats. Now, Kamala Harris even came out and said... I'm going to agree with her on this one thing, right? And I'm not going to pull up the article, but she did. You can trust me on that. You can Google it. Uh, but Kamala Harris came out and said, I support Joe Biden. He's a good man. He is light as a whistle. His brain is good. And this is just a political attack against Joe Biden. Now, I don't agree with that he's as good as a whistle. I agree with uh, the, word, the phrase that she said that this is a political attack on Joe Biden. And I believe she's right. But it's not a political attack from the Republicans. It's a political attack from her own freaking party. That's what it is. It is. <laughs> Whether or not that was in her intent, who knows? She's a smart woman. I think she knows where it's coming from. I really do. I really do. But meanwhile, the marching orders have been sent out to all the media. And just like that, within days and hours of this her announcement bam 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 and, and then now bam infighting's coming out at the white house he's rageful he's not a good guy and so these are going to continue to spiral out of control and the democrats are eating joe biden alive this is not what joe biden wants by the way he doesn't he wanted to run as president he's too senile if he was if he was a good man he would say, you know what? I'm not all there in the head. I understand I need to, to step aside for the safety of our country. But this is not what's happening. He is very stubborn and hard-headed. He doesn't give two licks. And he's gotten so much privilege over his whole life with, you know, CCP, Burisma, and, and all the departments looking the other way. He's got some people on his side. I believe Mayorkas is on his side. But the tables have turned. The tables have turned. And it's not necessarily to our benefit. Let me put it that way. I would prefer him stay in uh, 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 him run against uh, Donald Trump than anyone else because it's, it's it's a good bet for us, right? I would prefer Joe Biden stay up there. So this is not Republicans necessarily doing, this is Democrats. And I think it's, it's very clear, uh, I think to many of you out there, especially with the fact that he won't take uh, a cognitive test. Now, the good news is, is their GOP is at least trying to get the transcripts uh, of the Biden, her recordings. Uh, here's just a quick Zero Hedge article, House GOP 6 Biden, her dementia transcript recordings. I hope they get them. I really do. Because either way, I, I don't want anyone, and God forbid, he's still running for president in some freaking way he wins. I don't want somebody that refuses to take a cognitive test and who spoke to the DOJ and he's not all there running and having the button to push a nuclear code. And they really do need to get this guy out. Um, but um, either way, I don't want 
you know, a Newsom, a Whitner, Whitmer, or a Michelle Obama, you know, <laughs> making calls and shots for our country either. We're in some deep SHIT here in this country if we don't get the right people elected. And I, it is a sad day for America that he has even um, been president this long. He can't hide it anymore. They can't hide his issues. I mean, when he came out and said how good his memory was, he had memory lapses. <laughs> I, mean, I can't even, you can't even pay for this kind of entertainment. Anyway, I love all of you. I wanted to get all of that out to you guys. I want to really encourage you um, right now. There's a lot of censorship going on, and they're really talking about wiping alternative media completely from a lot of these social media platforms. So please get to RestrictedRepublic.com. I'm going to be putting out another huge report there today. And um, if you use the coupon code LISA and the number five, you can get it for $5 a month. That is literally less than a cup of coffee. You're supporting us and you're keeping us alive on air and able to bring you this information. But get to RestrictedRepublic.com. I hope you guys go. And uh, we share all the YouTube videos there without any commercials as well. So you also get that and you get exclusive content uh, that you're not going to hear on here on these controlled platforms. Anyhow, I love all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.